Okay, let's tackle part four of homework one for material energy balances. So, we'll start out on the iPad before we hop into some code. And let's go through the problem statement very quickly. The initial conditions state that the container is open. Therefore, the initial pressure is equal to one atmosphere or uh, 101325 pascals. Or, I don't want the eraser, I want this. Okay. And the initial mass of water is 1 kilogram, and the initial temperature is 298 Kelvin. The container is then sealed, which tells us that whatever air was in the system at the beginning is equal to the air in the system at the end. That will be important later. The final pressure is equal to 200,000 pascals, or 2 bar, which was what was given. And the moles of water in the vapor phase is equal to 0 0.3 moles. We were then asked to determine the final temperature at which the container is heated to in order to get to 200,000 pascals and what's the volume of the container. So the two things we want to focus on is the final pressure is equal to 200,000 pascals and the final moles of water in the vapor phase is equal to 0.3 moles. So we'll start with pressure. We can say that pressure F this is remember 200,000 is equal to the partial pressure of air plus the partial pressure of water and moles water is equal to P final well P water final times volume of the vapor phase over R and T final okay these are the two equations that are going to be the backbone of our solution. And uh, really quickly, remember that partial pressure of water is really easy to find using the Antoine equation, or in our case, the more uh, co complicated Antoine equation from Carlos's CHD dot tools. Okay, so we don't need to worry about the equations or math for that one. But let's look at Partial pressure of air. What's that? Well, using ideal gas law, we can say that P air equals N air plus, oh no, not plus, R T final over volume of the vapor phase equals P air. Okay. Well, we're looking for T final and we'll figure out volume of the vapor phase later, but let's look at moles of air. How do we find that? Well, recall that the container is sealed. So whatever moles of air is at the beginning is equal to the moles of air at the end. Therefore, we can say that N air is equal to uh, PI times V volume of the vapor phase initial over R times Ti. Well, we know Pi, we know Ti, but we don't know uh, moles, we don't know the volume of the vapor phase initially, but we can find that out. How? Well, we can say that, well, let's, let's think about the container very quick. Well, we don't know vol volume total, but we are given the mass of the water, which is one kilogram. Given that, we can look up the density of water and find the volume of water. So then the volume of the vapor phase is the total volume, which is part of what we're looking for, minus the uh, volume of the water. So let's write that down. Uh, let's specifically circle that. V that equals VT which doesn't change between initial and final conditions, minus V water initial. What's V water initial? Well, VT minus um, the mass of the water times the density of water at initial temperature. Um, let's double check the units because I can't do it in my head. Mass times 
mass per um, meters cube. That's not right. It's not multiplied, it's divide by. Okay. Mass of water initially divided by the density of water at initial temperature. So let's put that, all of that in our equation. So N moles of air is equal to PI times um, total volume minus initial mass divided by the density of water at initial conditions all over R times Ti. Okay. And we can, let's redraw this arrow to signify that this is the equation to find moles of air. Okay, we're good here. But up here, we do not know the volume of the vapor phase at final condition. We will use a similar method to find that by saying that, well, the volume of the vapor phase at final conditions is equal to the total volume minus V, the volume of water at final conditions. Again, we're going to use the Antoine equation because we do, well, we don't know what TF is, but we're going to allow Python to try a bunch of different values of TF to find out what's going to satisfy the two final conditions. So we can now rewrite this as volume of the vapor phase at final conditions is equal to Vt minus, again, oh, let me rephrase that. That is not true. We, we are able to figure this out because we are given moles of water in the vapor phase at final conditions. And if we know moles, we know mass. So we can rewrite as mm, moles of water in the vapor phase times the molar mass of um, water, which is 18 E negative 3. Let's check the units. That's mass times mass per mole, which is oh, mole times mass per mole. And that comes out to mass. That's great. All divided by the density of water at final conditions. Okay. And now that we have all of our equations set up, we'll go over to Python and I'll show you how all of this plugs into the scipy.optimize.root function. Part four of homework one. Well, this isn't the first time I've attempted recording this, so it's pretty much a blank slate, but I will go over what I have over right now. Well, the first thing you want to do is to import your necessary um, packages. So, but one of them, CHE tools, they, the package that Carlos built is not accessible by simply importing as a name. So we want to clone his GitHub repository of depth one. What the depth one means is that you are wanting the latest version of that repository. If you do not, if you omit this, depth one, then you pretty much ask for, hey, give me every version of this code that ever existed. It's a lot. We don't want all of that, right? Next, we're importing sys. And sys is a Python package that allows us to manipulate our directory. Then we use the function sys path insert to put our um, directory content tools, CHE tools, because CHE tools is what we want at the very first position that Python is going to look for when Python looks to import things. Okay, next module. We're importing tools.chesche, uh, Carlos's package. And from scipy optimize, we're importing root because we want to use the root function to find our two unknowns, uh, volume and temperature. And right here, I'm just setting um, the universal constant r. And I am creating an object 
named p as a CHE that properties object of water. So p will contain all of the physical properties of water that we are going to use for today's solution. Okay, by the way, if I keep looking down, that's not just, that's not because I'm cheating. It's because I'm looking at what we wrote down earlier. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to create a function for root to solve the root for, optimize the root of. So we're going to call this our equations, or define equations, and which takes in a vector of unknowns, where our vector of unknowns is equal to tf and v, our final temperature, and our uh, total volume. We'll call, we'll call that v tot. Unpack those variables. Okay. And what we want to return is an array of two equations. Our first equation being pf minus pf desired, or in other words, oh dear, too many hockeys, pf underscore desired, or in other words, the difference between the pf that we're calculating within here and our desired pf final pressure which is 200,000 pascals and the second equation is to do with our other known oops other known um, function property at final um, conditions which is n w moles of water in the vapor phase minus moles of water in the vapor phase desired. And I'll explain about the desired list in a second. So down here, we're going to declare our known variables where P, our initial pressure is equal to 101. Um, let me double check, 101, 325 pascals. Our initial temperature is equal to 298. Kelvin. Oh, let me double check if I'm recording. Uh, great. Okay. It would really suck if I go through this entire solution and find out that I'm not recording. Okay. Our desired final pressure, PF underscore desired, is equal to 200,000 pascals. Our um, desired moles of water in the vapor phase is equal to. 0.3 moles. Okay. And I think that is everything we have. Oh, mass. That's right. Our mass of initial mass of water is equal to uh, 1 kilogram. Okay. Now let's set up our equations. In order to do that, we're going to work backwards. Okay, and the two equations that dictate our um, final pressure and our final moles of water in the vapor phase is PF, final pressure, is equal to the partial pressure of air plus the partial pressure of water. Uh, partial, partial pressure of water at final conditions. And our moles of water, NWVAT, is equal to the partial pressure of water at final conditions times the volume of the vapor phase divided by R times the final temperature. Okay, we have a couple of unknowns here, which we're going to define. And let's just make sure we have our proper parentheses to dictate order of operations. Let's start with the easiest one to define, PW. Well, what's the partial pressure of water at the final temperature? We can define that using the Antoine equation, which is, we there's a more advanced Antoine equation in our CHE tools. So, P, W, underscore F, partial pressure of water at final conditions is equal to the object P. I'm calling the object P, and I want the property partial pressure, PVAP, at TF. Make sense? Okay. 
Next thing I want to define is P air. What's P air? Well, the partial pressure of air is, according to idle gas law, is equal to the moles of air times R times PF all over VVAP. Remember that VVAP is the volume of vapor, uh, the volume of the vapor phase at final conditions. Well, well, let's go ahead and find that really quick. Let's VVAP. Well, VVAP is equal to the the total volume, right, minus the liquid volume, right? But what's the liquid volume? Well, we can define the liquid volume as um, for the purposes of illustrating, the, the liquid volume is the V total minus V uh, hold on V total minus V vapor right? okay so we can define V total as V total minus VVAP, but what is VVAP? Well, we're told that there's 0.3 moles of water at the final conditions. So from 0.3 moles, we can multiply it by the partial, no, sorry, the molecular weight of water, which we know to be, let's see. Well, let's, let's, start, let's start cranking. NWVAP, desired, times V, the um, molecular weight of water in kilograms per mole. Well, kilograms per kilomole. Well, no, kilograms per mole. That's right. All of this divided by the density of water. There's something not quite right about this. That's not right. The volume of liquid, I'm misinterpreting this. We want to know the mass of liquid. <laughs> we want to know the mass of liquid at final conditions. Okay? We, we know that there's one kilogram of water in the system given by initial conditions. Okay? So, one minus, this is the mass of water in the vapor phase moles of water and vapor phase times the molar molecular weight of water okay so now this whole expression is equivalent to the mass of water in the vapor phase divide by p dot roll the density of water at final conditions okay that took some difficulty and i was a little bit misleaded and i misled you a bit but this should be the correct expression. So now we have V liquid and V vap. What's missing? Oh, we're missing moles of air. Okay, let's let's find out that expression really quick. So moles of air, we, we're going to use ideal gas law again, and we know that the air is not removed when we seal the container and heat it up. Therefore, we can say that the moles of air at final conditions is equivalent to the moles of air at initial conditions. So we are going to use the data that we know about initial conditions to find moles of air. So N air is equal to PI, initial pressure. Not just any PI, the initial pressure of air. Okay, so PI, the total pressure minus the partial pressure of water is equal to the partial pressure of air at initial conditions. What's the partial pressure of water at initial conditions? Well, we can find that out using uh, Antoine's equation in the CHE tools package. So, P dot PVAP at initial temperature. This whole expression is equal to the partial pressure of air at initial conditions. Okay, what's next? Volume times the volume of the vapor phase at initial conditions. Okay? 
that's equal to v total, the total volume of the container, minus the initial mass of water, uh, mw, over the density of water, p dot pvap ti. Okay? Well, now we have moles of air coming to mo uh, partial pressure of air at final conditions and coming to PF. Well, I do not think we need to move anything around, but we have P the partial we have the partial pressure of water at final conditions defined we have volume of the vapor phase defined uh, i believe everything should be defined and let's try running the root finder so root the first argument of root is your equation that you want to minimize or i shouldn't use i should not use the word minimize the equation that you want to optimize and the ch -ch 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 array of guesses, which we'll guess 350 and 10. Okay, it doesn't like that. There are problems with the equation, so I, I knew I'm missing something, but I'm gonna go through and double check what I am missing. Okay, after some deliberation, I found my errors, and they're not big errors. It's just my Ability, my failure to pay attention to details, but I the two errors was that right here I should be putting in the initial temperature rather than the final temperature and right here I had accidentally used the partial pressure function rather than the density function which doesn't allow the um, function to come to a solution. With that in mind with our equation plugged into the root and our initial guesses of 350 and 10, the function is able to successfully come to two conclusions, which are our correct values for the final temperature, which is 366 uh, Kelvin, and our volume to be Point zero zero one two five liters. This concludes homework one and the solution of part four. And I hope you had a good time viewing this. Thank you.